for hundreds of years, Bonterre, Missouri has been all about what used to go on here underground. But these days, people here are thinking more about what's overhead, thanks to a longtime resident who believes the sky is truly the limit. I don't have a problem with a whole lot of people, but I have a problem with people who talk a lot and do nothing. Earl Mullins is not just a talker. Roger, zero G, and I feel fine. Capsule is turning around. He had a dream to build a space museum in Bonterre. So in 2003, Earl took over the building that had once been the city's water department and flooded it with items from his personal collection of space memorabilia. But launching the museum was a challenge. Uh, here's the way about. Like Apollo 13, Earl's space museum seemed destined to be a successful failure. Went one and a half years and nobody stepped through the door, not one. But Earl never gave up. And today, the Space Museum is on a much better trajectory. We've been at this for 18 years. It's just now beginning to blossom. That balloon will soon be hurtling across the sky a thousand miles high over North America. Earl's fascination with space began in the early 1960s, when he was just a kid, intrigued by an early experiment in satellite communication called Project Echo. You can fire up the transmitter. Right. I spent a lot of time in the front yard looking up in the sky, and I saw this thing. It was Echo, and I was had. From then on, Earl began collecting anything he could find related to space, whether based on fact or fantasy, starting with this Project Mercury pencil sharpener he won at a carnival. What is that called? A crash helmet? Oh, I hope not. <laughs> The first pieces to go on display here came from Earl's personal collection. There are real cosmonaut gloves and so-called satellite shoes. Even the soap dispenser in the restroom is out of this world. One reason that I went into the space museum business so I could get my hands on more stuff. And he has. Earl estimates his personal collection today is worth at least a half million dollars. But that's only the beginning. We are in possession. It's going on $23 million worth of NASA stuff. Even before it opened, it was clear the one thing the Space Museum lacked was space. So in 2014, work began on a new addition, built by some of the same men who helped build the space program itself. Project Mercury had officially begun. St. Louis-based McDonnell Douglas played a critical role in the space race, and it was a team of retired Mac engineers, all in their 80s, who came to Bonterre every weekend for almost four years to work with other volunteers and donors to create an annex in an adjacent building named in memory of Gus Grissom, one of the Mercury 7 astronauts who later died in a fire aboard Apollo 1. We're really not done, Paul. We're adding artifacts uh, nearly every two or three months as, as NASA makes them available. It is a space shuttle main gear tire. There were four of these and then two smaller tires on the nose. That's a piece of heat shield off of Apollo 8 lunar rover fenders. That's actually the keys to the space shuttle. There is also a piece of Skylab that fell to the Earth in Australia and a separated Saturn V engine inlet found in the ocean that possibly came from Apollo 11. You know, Paul, most people think that uh, the white on the shuttle is paint, and it really is not. It's, uh, there is a coating on there, and this is it. It's a ceramic fiber or blanket. If you were to look at the shuttle up close, it would look like a patchwork quilt. But the museum's most prized flown item is this small flag taken into space by Gene Cernan, the last American to walk on the moon. It either stayed in the spacecraft that orbited the moon or it went with him and it could have literally been on the surface of the moon. Don't tell me, let me guess. This is the space toilet. It is the space toilet and frankly, it's one of the uh, most often asked questions how to use the bathroom in space. The water is extracted, recirculated, and you use it again. For the toilet? No. For? Yes. At one time, there had been talk about moving the museum to St. Louis, and for a brief time, part of it did move to Branson. 
Unfortunately, we were a small fish in a big pond down there. Up here, we kind of like to think of ourselves as a big fish in a small pond, so we'll see. Basically, the reaction we get is in bon terre, really. To which Earl responds, why not? After all, bon terre is French for good earth, and it was also where swing-away can openers were made, the brand used aboard the first U.S. space station. We really like to think that we're about more than the artifacts. We're about a way of thinking. We're about dreaming big, pushing the boundaries, uh, uncovering problems, and then solving those problems. It's a Michelin, <laughs> for crying out loud. For Earl, the goal has always been to turn visitors into enthusiasts, like Debbie House, a retired nurse who came to the museum looking for work as a volunteer. Today, she is the administrative assistant. The very first thing he talked to me after, you know, you go through the regular who you are and what you've done, and he'll say, do you know when we landed on the moon? And I said, no. He said, then obviously you don't know who landed on the moon. And I said, no. He said, do you care? I said, no. But I'm going to tell you something. I have fallen in love with this. This is my passion. I want to know more. I try every day to learn more. Godspeed, John Glenn. There is an illustration on the wall here, which includes a quote from astronaut John Glenn that seems an apt description of what the Space Museum is all about. He said it may be that those who dream the most do the most. Or put another way, creating the Space Museum was one small step for mankind, thanks to one giant leap by a man. It's about doing noble things. It's about reaching out of your comfort zone, thinking about things more than just yourself, and doing something for humanity. And leave a legacy. Leave more than you take. Houston, uh, Tranquility Base here. The Eagle has landed. Roger, Tranquility. We copy you on the ground. You got a bunch of guys about to turn blue. We're breathing again. Thanks a lot.